Jeff, absolute no gi Grand Prix press conference. This event goes down tomorrow night at the Hangar, Costa Mesa, California. And we have an amazing undercard. We've got some black belt super fights. We also got the absolute no gi GP. So before we get started with these matches, just want to remind you guys that this event is brought to you by King's Kimonos. So go to kings.com, check out all their gis, no gi gear, and apparel. We're going to start out with some of our black belt gi super fights. On my right, I got Shane Jamil Hill Taylor. On my left, Zach Kaina. So Shane, first question for you. Haven't been quite as active the past couple of years. I know you, you've been dealing with some injuries and you've been doing a lot of coaching. Can you just talk about your journey to get to this match and, and to this point in your career? Um, yeah, I didn't take care of myself as a kid or as a teenager or as a young adult. So I'm kind of paying for it now with the injuries and things. So it's been a lesson in that, taking care of my body and all that. So, yeah, the past couple of years have been trash. Kind of sucked. I haven't been able to compete nearly as much as I wanted. But... Yeah, IBJJF hit me up, and I was like, I can't. Once somebody asks me to do something, I always say yes. It's just a matter of if people know I'm injured or not. So that's that's pretty much it. Once I say I'm going to do something, I'm going to train and, and do what I need to do to get ready for the match. So, Zach, last year was a really interesting and important year for you. It was your rookie year as a black belt. You competed a lot. You were really, really active. What were some of the things that you felt like you did really well last year that you want to keep improving on, and what are some of the areas where you feel like you want to make some adjustments? Um, yeah, last year I was my first year in the black belt. Um, it was for me. It was all, all about collecting experiences, fighting as many high level people as I could, and uh, kind of gauge where I'm at and and go from there. And going into this year, it's basically the same mindset, just going even further now, trying to fight even more big names and and beat as many of them as I can. And this was one of the first opportunities that came up, so I'm stoked. I'm excited. So Shane, one thing that's really interesting about your game is you you incorporate a lot of creativity. Like I remember the pans, I think it was 2022, you hit that reverse triangle, and you always have some really interesting and creative techniques. I know winning is always a priority for you, but are you also, is that something you take pride in as being creative and, and kind of putting on a show for people when they watch you compete? I try to, but if you watch Featherweight recently over the past few years, it's not always easy to do that. Some, yeah. some people rather not do that. So I always try to, but... I don't know. I don't really go into the, like a match with a set mindset on trying to be different or trying to like not take the obvious attacks and go for some like unique stuff or something I made up. But it just comes from training, and I've been training a long time, and I've always been able to be um, creative in training and, and come up with unique approaches to, to problems in jiu-jitsu. So it, it comes out as much as possible in, in matches. So Zach, Shane won the Worlds all the way back in 2018. I believe you were in Blue Belt maybe at the time. So is he someone that you kind of grew up watching and that you took any inspiration from when you were coming up through the color belts? Um, yeah, when, when he won his first uh, world title, I believe I was Juvenile 1. And uh, I remember watching that, and it was super cool, super inspiring, uh, especially seeing an American winning the, that world title. Um, but I think that's what makes this match inter interesting, is uh, we're both kind of in different stages of our career. Um, I'm I'm more you could say the the rookie black belt. It's my second going into my second season in the black belt, and uh, he's been around for a little while. And you know those matches are always exciting when we have a an upper comer that's hungry and uh, wants to beat big names. And he's getting back to competition. I'm sure he's hungry too. So it would be an exciting match for sure. Thank you, Zach. Thank you, Shane. Good good luck tomorrow night, guys. Thank you. Next up, we got Jackson, the guy who's on my right, and San Sandry Silva, who's on my left. Jackson, first question for you. You were supposed to compete at the Crown last year. Unfortunately, you had an injury. I know you've been recovering and, and getting back to full health. So can you talk about how you're feeling now and how your training went for this event? Yeah, you know, I, I was excited for, for be fighting at Crown, but I got hurt, you know. Then I have a hard time recovering. Last year was a very hard year for me because I was getting, I was active. I was competing a lot. I have a good match at awards, you know, being in the podium with the great athletes. And that's just giving me more motivation. Our life is about that. No? We have a struggle and we got to overcome that. And today I'm here again to give a show. Uh, I really like my opponent style, how, how he fight. He go forward and I, I also go forward. I don't have any game plan. I just go and and I see what is going to have there. I'm excited. Sandri, uh, this has been a really interesting time period for you because you just got your black belt. You've jumped into some opens. You've done really, really well. Can you talk about your early experiences competing at the black belt? 
Uh, so, I'm very excited for my first competition the Black Belt. I'm training a lot. I'm ready. I'm gonna show my Jiu-Jitsu for world. Jackson, you talked a little bit about Sandry's style, and, and you think it's a really exciting matchup. I think there's a lot of consensus on that. People are very much in agreement. What is it about Sandry's Jiu-Jitsu that you think is gonna make for a great match? Yeah, watching his highlight, he's, he's pretty aggressive, and that's very nice, you know, because in the end of the day, we made this for entertainment. We want to show a, we want to give a show so so people watching at, at home or at the event, they buy the tickets, they, they, they sign up for Fograp to show a good, to watch a good show, and I think he's going to give his 100%, and my, I also going to give my 100%, and it's going to be fun. He's, gonna, he's motivated because he just got his black belt. He want to he wanna show his hard work, and I'm motivated too. Like I have a lot of things to, I'm coming back for injury. I, now I, I open in my own gym in Chino, and a guy check my Chino, so I gotta, I gotta represent my, my students, you know, they're all, all cheering for me. I gotta go there and, and go 100%. So Sandra, same question for you. Jackson has a really exciting style. What, what is it about Jackson's game and his jujitsu that, that is exciting for you and that you feel like it's gonna make this a great match? Uh. I... Não, não, entendi, entendi, entendi. Só... Estou vendo o que eu vou falar. E Jackson Nagai, eu tenho um longo tempo de Black Belt. Eu tenho muito tempo. Eu tenho uma oportunidade para mim. Eu estou pronto, vamos lá. Obrigado, Sandri. Obrigado, Jackson. Boa sorte amanhã, galera. Next up, we got Andy Murasaki on my left, Matias Luna on my right. You guys have fought a couple times, have some experience competing against one another. But Andy, I wanted to start off. You competed at the Europeans recently, had an amazing performance. I know you won a lot of matches in dominant fashion. What were some of your takeaways from Europeans that you hope to bring into the GP? Uh, I, I used to always see, like my game was always very positional game. If I was on bottom, I was usually looking to like end up on top like getting a sweep or maybe taking the back something like that you know and if i was on top mainly get a guard pass and then looking for i started looking for submissions like side control mount or if they i'm able to expose their back taking the back and then look for uh, submission but i think my takeaway lesson is that you can always look for submissions you know like i feel like now this past four or five weeks four weeks of training three weeks or four weeks of training I've been focusing a lot on submissions, like from bottom, from top, from everywhere, and that's what I want to bring it tomorrow. I want to try and hit my new moves I've been working. Yeah. Matisse, I believe this is your first IBJJF match of 2024, and Andy is an opponent, like I mentioned, that you fought a couple times before. What was your motivation for taking this match? Were you, was the rematch something you were looking forward to? Um, I think it was, like, I think it was the best opportunity that I could have like this for the beginning of the year. Um, I think my goals of this year is fight like with the best of the planet, you know, and and like can feel really well on on that. And I think to, it's gonna be a good warm up for the year, you know. I'm planning to fight the big tournaments and fight like literally with the best. And I know the the year just tied off. <laughs> So we've talked a bit about your, your matches in the past. Like, what were some of your takeaways from your matches with Matias? Like, are, are there anything anything that you learned from those matches that, that is really going to inform how you compete tomorrow night? Uh, yeah, we fought twice. The last time we fought was in August. You know, so it's kind of recent. And yeah, I think I need to be very aware with the mat space because he runs out a lot. So I gotta be aware with the mat space. Try to keep the fight in the center. You know. Uh, it happens very often, like sometimes you have good positions and you go out of bounds and restart, you know, it's sometimes it can be a bad reset. So I'm just trying to visualize, like, if I get to a good position, like, be aware of the mat space, you know, if that happens. I, I believe the mat will be big enough because it's a super fight event. And, but it, it, somehow it, we always have fight going out of bounds, right? Even when the mat is big. So I want to keep that in mind and also he's very explosive, very, you know, opportunistic, so I need to be aware in the beginning of the match and throughout the match. And like he said, uh, he's ex he, he's excited for this match. He's coming up with a loss, so I, I know he wants uh, revenge. So I'm, I'm very well prepared and, you know, I'm not taking, like, I'm not thinking this is an easy match at all. It's a very tough match and I'm bringing everything I have.
Matias, any comment on, on Andy's comments on your previous matches? I agree with him. But they're going to have enough space. I think their match is going to be pretty big. <laughs> so I don't think it's going to have as much like interruptions. Like We're not going to stop as much the match. And um, I think that for the last fight, like, it happens, you know, like, uh, I think I grew a lot from, from that match. I learned a lot. That's how I was competing as much last year. So, yeah, that was good. Was Thanks, Matias. <laughs> Thanks, Andy. Good luck tomorrow night, guys. Next up, we got Cade Rutolo on my right, Natan Chuang on my left. Cade, first question for you. This is your Black Belt Gi debut. Um, how excited are you for this opportunity to compete in the Gi? Super excited, guaranteed. It's been a long overdue for sure. I think the last time I was really like actively training the gi was, was last year with my brother for World's Camp, you know, so it's been a, a long time overdue and it's just refreshing to get the gi back on for sure. Yeah, I think you said la it was maybe 2021 Worlds was the last time you competed in the gi and then prior to that it was 2019. So quite, quite a bit of breaks in between that. What, what's your motivation to come back and, and compete in the gi and test yourself now? I, I pretty much just the fact that I haven't competed as, as a black belt, right? It's my black belt debut, and uh, like I said, it's just been so, so long overdue. Um, you know, I really wanted to do Worlds this year. That was a big goal of mine, so probably going to have to qualify for that. Um, but with that being said, just, just being more active in the gi in general is kind of one of my main goals this year for sure. So, Natan, you have some experience competing in these GPs, and you've done really well, had an amazing match with Jackson back in 2023. Can you talk about Cade as an opponent for this, for this match? Yeah, first time, I'm uh, very happy to be here for the second time. He's a great honor and pleasure for me. For sure, Keyes is very good athlete, he's very aggressive, he's focusing his submission all the time, like my style. Uh, for sure, I'm going to do my best tomorrow, and for sure, uh, we're going to wait for the show tomorrow. Yeah. Thank you. So, Ken, I know this fight came together a little bit last minute, and you've been, you've been active, but you've competing with, been competing without the gi. What were some of the adjustments you made the last week or the last couple of days putting the gi on? Was there anything you had to change compared to your no gi game? Pretty much just putting the gi on. <laughs> it really was the, was the main thing. Uh, you know, not a whole lot changes. You know, every time my brother and I step out on those mats, it's the same goal. So, you know, take our opponent down, submit them, uh, pass if we can on along the way, right? So um, that's always the goal going into it. Uh, not a whole lot changed. Just like I said, putting on the gi for the most part. Yeah. Natana, your last match uh, against Jackson at the GP, it was a really high-paced match, and I think a lot of people are expecting the same type of thing with Cade. So can you comment on Cade's pace and just whether or not you expect the match to kind of play out similarly to the one with Jackson? Yeah, for sure. Tomorrow I'm put 100% because this is uh, my style, right? A lot of aggressive all the time. It doesn't matter if I stay on top, on board, or, or take it down. I mean, I'm wary for sure. Tomorrow, the semi version, when I compete the first GP, right, against Jackson Nagai, I'm wary for the show tomorrow. Yeah. Okay, you alluded to it a little bit already, but you said you want to do the Worlds this year. But what, what are your future plans with the Gi outside of just the Worlds? Anything else planned for this year? Yeah, I mean, no, 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 nothing set in stone as far as gi plans go, but just overall, it's my year, I kind of, you know, I've been thinking about this year more so than just, you know, trying to, you know, become solidified in no gi or gi. Uh, I want to be known as, you know, one of the greatest just combat martial artists of all time, you know, so uh, along with, you know, gi, no gi, I'm going to be making my MMA appearance this year as well pretty soon in the next couple of months. So uh, I really just want to be known as one of the best martial artists of all time, not just a specific um, you know, specific sports. So that's one of my main goals this year. And, uh, you know, obviously being present in the Gi, winning Gi Worlds is going to be a huge part of that. Awesome. Thank you, Cade. Thank you, Natan. Good luck tomorrow night, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So next up, we have our last Black Belt Gi Super Fight of the night. We got Mauricio Oliveira on my left, Tyne Dalper on my right. Tynan, it's your first Gi match of 2024. I know you've talked a lot about wanting to work on your submissions, and that's something you've been focusing on in training. Can you talk about that process and just how your submission games evolved recently? Yeah, I think since I've uh, started preparing and training the no Gi, that's something that has added a lot to my Gi training. And, um, you know, pretty much focusing mostly on the pace, making sure I keep a high pace during the matches and make sure that I'm able to land in dominant positions and follow up with the submission. So I think before maybe my game was very much so in dominating the position and now it's being a little bit more uh, dynamic in sort of looking for submissions, you know, so I consider myself now a lot more dangerous whenever I'm in all aspects, bottom top and uh, chasing, still chasing good positions, 
but most important, just leading with a high pace and making sure that I'm able to drain the press's energy and into I lead the submission. Mauricio, you're coming into this match off a gold medal at the Europeans. You won the medium heavyweight division, had an incredible performance in Paris. Can you talk about that and just how much confidence that that gold medal performance gave you coming into this match with Tynan? É, o campeonato europeu foi muito bom para mim. É, gostei muito da minha performance. Sendo sincero, foi a minha melhor performance desde quando eu voltei da cirurgia. Eu acho que a cada campeonato que passa, eu venho melhorar a minha confiança, tentando lutar para frente. E com certeza me deu muita confiança para essa luta. So, um, I consider, I, um, I consider uh, the, my, the, my performance at the Europeans actually my best performance that I've had in my career, um, especially coming after a surgery that I had. And it's giving me a lot of confidence for this match uh, against Tynan. I'm lo very looking uh, much forward to, to the competition tomorrow. Tynan, Mauricio is an opponent you've never faced before, and I feel like this is kind of a theme in all your matches at these events. You're always looking to challenge yourself against athletes that you've never faced before in competition. So can you talk about that and how important that is for your development as an athlete? Yeah, this is actually a match that I asked for because we've been a few times in the same division. We never happened to meet at the competition yet. And um, he's an athlete that has been um, very active. He's always been actually a year ahead of me. So when I was a blue belt, he was winning purple. When I was a purple belt, he was winning the brown belt. And uh, I knew that eventually we would meet in the black belt division. But I didn't expect to take this long, you know. So finally, I was able to make the match happen uh, on this catch weight division, and um, and I feel like trying to make the match a 15 minute. I feel like he lays more on your, on my side. He just he excites me more to make sure that I will be more. I'll have more mat time. I'll have more time during the match to make sure I'm able to develop my training, my jutsu. And, uh, you know, all the way into he pushes me to the submission. Mauricio Tynan is one of the most accomplished middleweights that's active right now. He's won every major title in the sport. What do you feel like is your path to victory against someone as high level and as accomplished as Tynan? É, o Tynan é um cara muito bom de jiu-jitsu. Tenho muito respeito por ele. Tenho muito respeito pela forma como ele trata os seus adversários com respeito. Eu acho que vai ser uma grande luta, ele tem um estilo agressivo, eu também tenho um estilo agressivo. Eu não sou muito de fazer planos, porque eu acho que às vezes a gente faz plano e a gente se frustra ali na luta. Eu sou de lutar mesmo e eu tô pronto. So, um, I, I like Tynan's uh, jiu-jitsu a lot. Um, I have a lot of uh, respect and admiration for, for Tynan and also the way that he treats his opponents with a lot of respect. Um, we both have a very aggressive uh, style. I'm not one to make like plans for the match. Um, I'm just going to go in and, and just uh, do my best and it's going to be a good show for everybody watching. Tyler, we've talked a lot, not only about your competition career, but also the coaching that you do on a day-to-day -day basis. You got a lot of teammates competing on the card, especially blue and purple belts. Can you talk about how exciting that is for you to see some of the athletes that you help to coach on a daily basis competing on a stage like this? Well, that's, I feel like that's the most special part, to be honest, because just to see the team being very united and cheering on for every single person that it's in the card, it, you know, it fills me up with energy and knowing that at at the end of the day, I'm the person that steps there last. I think like it's going to be a great way for us to finish uh, a victory date, right? So these kids have been training their entire lives and they've been dedicating so much. And, you know, I'm the one that sees that. And I see myself so much in most of them, right? Just yeah. completely dedicating this and their entire life to this craft and making sure that they give everything to, you know, build their name and become someone uh, recognizable in the sport. And I know this opportunity means a lot to them. So thank you, Abby Jeff, for bringing them onto the show. And I'm sure that you guys, um, you guys can expect a great show coming from all of them, you know, from even the girls, uh, the juveniles, the purple belts. Uh, Zach is also competing. Yeah. So they're very excited for this. They work hard and and I just can't wait to there to be there and watching and, and make sure that at the end of the day that I also wait, make my walk out there and uh, that we're all going to leave with the submission and make sure that we finish the day in a good victory day. Thank you, Tynan. Thank you, Mauricio. We're really looking forward to your match tomorrow. Thank you, guys.
Next up, we got our first match of the Absolute Nogi GP. Kainan Duarte on my left, Hi Samrit on my right. Kainan, you've won the Absolute GP before in the Gi, looking to be, I, I believe, the first ever Gi and Nogi Absolute GP champion. So can you talk about that, and is, was that motivation for you coming into this? Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, the last time that I compete was in the Gi, but right now I'm more focused in the Nogi, so I'm very looking forward. I've been training for a few weeks, uh, just pretty much training, eating and sleep I was kind of bored already. So I can't wait to, to step on the mat and show my new skills. Awesome, you're back competing in an IBJJF event. I believe the last time you competed was the 2022 Pan Nogi. So how does it feel to be back at an IBJJF event and for it to be a big event like the Absolute GP? Yeah, um, again, I'm a... Uh, is it working? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Again, I'm uh, very grateful for the opportunity to compete on the GP. You know, when I got when they hit me up to do it, you know, I was looking forward to something to get going. So, um, you know, I'm excited to be here and very grateful. I mean, the last time I competed at IBJJF, the ending wasn't the best. So hopefully we can change that tomorrow. Kainan Heisem's a, a really dangerous opponent. He's got a lot of really creative submissions. He submits a lot of the opponents that he faces. Do you prepare any differently for someone who is that dangerous with their submission game, or did you just kind of do your preparation being ready for anyone? Uh, usually I just do my own thing, but I need to be aware. Uh, he's a great opponent. He, he already proved that he deserves to be here. He's like a very tall guy. <laughs> he has like a good arm bars. He's very, a lot of scrambles. And yes, uh, I know what he does a little bit, but I'm always focused on my game and I'm looking forward to I push the pace. Hi, so we talked a little bit before the press conference about your training at B Team. You just joined that team about, I think you said seven months ago. Yeah, seven months. So can you talk about how that training has been going and, and what some of the changes that you've made in your game since you started training with that team out in Texas? Uh, yeah, I think uh, after ADCC 2022 kind of blew up and all that stuff. So, and you know, I was just being honest with myself. I knew my weakness, and you know, um, look around. Some of the best teams around are like B team. So, you know, I reach out to them like, hey, this is what I want to work on, and like, you know, can I join the team? And I got the opportunity to be with them, and you know. Again, I was talking about it. It takes a while, you know. I wish I could like just go there within a week or two or within a month. I squeeze in everything I can, but it doesn't work that way. But you know, baby steps, we get in there, and uh, yeah, I'm excited where I'm at, and I'm grateful for everything. I'm looking forward to put on the show tomorrow. Thank you, Hysom. Thank you, Kainan. We'll see you guys thank tomorrow you, night. Thank you. Thank you, man. Next up, we got Dante Leon and Elder Cruz. Dante, last time we saw you at a major IBJJF tournament was the Pan Nogi. You jumped into the super heavyweight division. Super exciting. You beat a Nogi world champion in the final. And I think for black belts at this level, it's pretty uncommon to see someone who's giving up that much weight jump into these open weight categories or, or give up that much weight. So can you talk about your mindset going into events like that, going into an event like this? Uh, yeah, I think it's uh, I think it's something that I have the skill set to do that not a lot of people uh, my size have. You know, yeah. uh, between my technical ability and my physicality and my strength, I'm able to kind of close the gap on a lot of those things. It's still tough. I'm not going to act like it's easy, but you know, it is tough to deal with the size advan uh, advantage that a lot of these people have. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's always fun to challenge myself and to stay as active as I want to stay. It's really hard to just focus on one division to have that activity. You know, a lot of these people that are in the bracket haven't competed since uh, the last calendar year. Some of them haven't competed since, you know, five, six months ago. So it's, uh, it's tough for me to have that activity that I want to have just being in one division. So this makes it a little easier. This makes it a lot more challenging and uh, it just helps me get better. Elder, you're coming off an incredible performance in Vegas at the World's No Gi, won your first Black Belt World title. Can you talk about that? Like, what were some of the things that you learned from the World's No Gi, and what are some of the skills that you think you improved upon that you're going to bring to this absolute No Gi GP? Um, at the World No Gi's, it was just, um, it just gave me the confidence, you know, like, I, like, because I struggled a lot in the beginning of the year, and I wasn't getting, like, I was training very hard, but not getting the results I wanted. And winning the World Nogi title, um, it just like reignited like that, that confidence that I, I am who I think I am, you know what I mean? I, I want to be great and that's what I train very hard to do. So I think 
uh, winning the Will No Gi title just gave me more confidence and um, I've definitely gotten a lot better since then. You know what I mean? I've just been in the gym basically training, trying to get better. You know what I mean? I I didn't win the Nogi World title in spectacular fashion, but a lot of the people that like talk about or criticize have never even won a Nogi World title. So for me, last year was more about like winning by any means necessary. And tomorrow will be the same thing. Like I'm going up against the pound for pound, like best guys in the world. And I'm going to win. I'm going to, I'm going to win by like whatever means necessary. You know what I mean? Regardless if the crowd's with me or not, you know what I mean? But I believe in myself and I know I have what it takes to, to win. One thing that makes this match really interesting, you talked a little bit about like your skill set and your ability. You have the skill set to be able to challenge these guys who outweigh you quite a bit. Elder is someone who has really good takedowns. You have really good takedowns. You think we're going to see some cool exchanges on the feet tomorrow night? Uh, yeah, there's a good chance of that. You know, I uh, ten minute, ten minute match is a long time. I and, begin, um, yeah. I'm extremely prepared for this match. So, John Carlo, you've been training with New Wave now for a while, and a lot of your professors and teammates have said that you have like the skill set to beat anyone in the world no gi and one of the things that um, maybe they want to see out of you is just like more consistency would you agree with that do you feel like that's something that is something that you're trying to work on is just being able to show that you can beat anyone in the world on any given day in competition yeah absolutely i mean i think consistency is the key is in, in everything and you know developing skills and staying in shape um, and for uh, competition results as well. So, I mean, I'm always looking for that consistency. Um, and I feel that uh, this last camp has been um, probably one of my best camps that I've had since the last ADCC camp. Uh, so I'm looking forward to uh, be able to perform tomorrow. Patrick, John Carlos, a really dangerous opponent, really well-rounded. Just want to get your take on his skill set, his game, and, and how you feel like this match could potentially play out. É, Giancarlo é um excelente atleta, é, conheço ele já há um, long, há um bom tempo, ele já participou também da GFT, onde a gente treinou há longo tempo junto. E eu nunca me importei com quem eu vou lutar e sim como eu vou me preparar para chegar e dar meu 100%. So uh, Giancarlo is an excellent athlete. Uh, I've, I actually know him for, for, for quite some time. We've trained together before. And to me, honestly, it doesn't really matter uh, the name on the other side of the, of the bracket or the name of the person that I'm facing in, a, in, a, in an event like this. I'm, I'm ready for, for whoever I'm going to face. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you, Giancarlo. We'll see you guys tomorrow night. Appreciate it. Thank you, Patrick. All right, Pedro. Last opening round match of the Absolute Nogi GP. We got Pedro Rocha on my left. Roosevelt is on my right. Pedro, first question for you. This is your first IBJJF absolute Nogi GP appearance. Can you talk about what this opportunity means to you? Man, I'm feeling very happy to be here. I know he's a big challenge for me because I think with all the, the, the people have on my bracket is the big GF in the weight. But I train with my brother every day. So my brother, like uh, I think he's the same weight, a little bit heavy. You know, depend if you come back in the weekend, he's going to be a little bit heavy. But uh, you're gonna be good. I'm so happy to be here. Uh, it's insane how the how, how beautiful you see IBJJF growing in that way. You know, like uh, since I started competing in IBJJF uh, 20 years ago, like CBJJ. So and see right now the the size, uh, how beautiful it can be. Like I'm so happy to be here and grateful. Tomorrow I give my best and yeah, I think that's it. Roosevelt, last year was, I think it's fair to say last year was the best year of your career. You won Pan No Gi, you won World No Gi. What were some of the changes you made last year? What were some of the, the things that you really felt pushed you over that edge to get those incredible results? Uh, first of all, thank you for the opportunity to be here one more time. I'm really grateful for you guys. Uh, last year was a great year for my career. Um, I think that the difference was I commit myself to train more No Gi, you know, so since I have more skills, more background in my school with my professors. They, they've been more competing in no gi. So that be, made a big difference on my game. And I've been developed a really strong, solid game in no gi. So I'm looking for to perform uh, the same way that I did last year in this, in this GP. Yep, looking forward to show showcase everything I've been working on. 
Pedro, I want to ask you a little bit about Roosevelt and his game because he's someone who always fights forward and always fights for the submission, has really good ankle locks, really good knee bars. What was it like preparing for that? And is it exciting for you to fight someone who you know is going to really go for it? Yeah, um, I trained for him one time, I think like I, almost a year ago. Uh, Roosevelt is a, he's a nice guy. Every time I see him in the tournament, he, he, I always talk to him. He's a, he's a really nice person. So I think this is much more important than everything. But um, yeah, he looked for the legs. So uh, four years ago, since I made the decision to just train Nogi, uh, I started to like, uh, looking forward for people doing like uh, heel hooks, ankle locks, uh, knee bars, all this stuff. And I have a guy right now training for me, uh, really good in that. And I, uh, I'm feeling much more comfortable to fight in this rule set and like uh, and talk about reap all these kind of things you know uh, uh, I, I know he looked for this but I'm looking for his neck too so he I know what he tried to do and he know what I tried to do so let's gonna see who take first you know yeah Pedro made a great point he's also a submission hunter always going for the neck has one of the best guillotines in the sport can you talk about his style and and, and same question for you is it exciting to fight someone who you know is really trying to put put effort into finishing the match yeah man uh, He's a really tough guy. Like he said, we trained. I uh, went to his gym, trained with him, his brother. And, you know, like, uh, friendships are the side. Like, I'm looking for the submission. Like, always, you know, that's my style. Not only you guys always say the rules, though, looking for the leg attacks, but I have a, a lot of submissions. I just, I'm looking for the opportunity to show off more, right? And, uh, yep, like, I, I, I'm, if he's looking for my neck, uh, let's 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 see what's gonna happen, right? Cause it's gonna be hard. <laughs> Thank you, Roosevelt. Thank you, Pedro. Really excited for this match tomorrow. Thank you. Thanks for watching the Absolute Nogi GP press conference. This event goes down tomorrow night at the Hangar in Costa Mesa. Starts at 5 p.m. for the undercard, 6 p.m. for the main card. You can watch it all live on Flow Grappling. Thanks for watching.